humans aren't born out of laying around on their asses. We've been born out of conquering a world. We're the dominant species. We built all this. We're powerful and we're beautiful and we're ready to build the next level of civilization in God's plan. But you must stop bowing to those who want to make you a victim. You must become the victor. If you love God and you want to build a pro-human future, then you are an enemy of the New World Order and Satanism. They want us shut down because we have the spirit. I'm jacked into the source. I know the secret and I want to see you empowered. But you have to believe in yourself first. This is the truth and everyone knows it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Dragon Age the Veil Guard very well could win Game of the Year at the uh, the Video Game Awards. And uh, I find it to be so hysterical because the majority of people who are voting on this are journalists and, uh, you know, access media types. You and I are not voting on this. We're not asked to vote because, well, I mean, there's no way that Dragon Age the Veil Guard would even get nominated. But because it has the message... And the right politics, it very well could win Game of the Year, which actually would probably be one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen. Like, imagine getting up there, and I know this could never happen because Jeff Keighley would never let it happen, but they get up there and everyone starts booing them. <laughs> However, ladies and gentlemen, I am replaying Dragon Age Origins, and it is fantastic. I really am enjoying this game. I came across a scene that I wanted to show you. Now, this isn't my gameplay, but it is the same scene from the game. Somebody was nice enough to upload the footage. There's a scene in the game where you're about to leave Lothering, which is one of the first cities that you... you city is a large word. Towns. Um, that's been overrun by refugees that are fleeing the uh, the lost battle um, with the dark spawn. So you've got a bunch of refugees, you've got a bunch of people in there. You know, they're they're clogging up the town. They really don't have enough space, but they're trying to do their best. And in this scene, and we're going to watch it, I want you to take a look. <laughs> because this game is so based, it allows you to do this. I don't know what was said. You're a warden. I don't know if you killed King Kalen and make her forgive me. I don't care. But that bounty on your head could feed a lot of hungry bellies. Attack! Now let's see. This one's <laughs> That's right. That's right. You can wipe out the refugees. <laughs> this would never make it into Dragon Age. Uh, th this would never make it into Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Uh, but that is just... Th that is just so refreshing. The fact that you can just do that. I have cut. Let's see. Um, oh, and, and one other thing I wanted to talk about. In uh, in Dragon Age: The Veil Guard, or I'm sorry, in Dragon Age Origins. Here's something else I found. When I got to Lothring. There's a character, there's a companion that you get named Morgan. You can tell her to leave. The first chance you get, you can say, uh, I don't want you here. Get lost. I think you can even call her a bitch. Like, bitch, get out of here. And she leaves. There's another character um, that goes by the name of Liliana. You get her early on too. 
You can ask her to leave. I haven't tried to ask Alistair to leave. But I wouldn't be surprised. It seems like you can immediately ask any of your characters that you want to leave. That is called choice. How is it that they fundamentally lost that in Dragon Age the Veil Guard? Did you not understand that that is what made that game special? It is choice. You can choose. You choose to be a paragon or you choose to be a ruthless bastard. I'll tell you what I did on my first playthrough. I went to, you know, when you enter Lothring, there are a bunch of, there are a bunch of, you know, highwaymen. You know, basically people that are there to rob you. And they call it a, a tax, a, like a refugee tax. And I convinced them, like, look, I'm a Grey Warden, all right? I've got, a, uh, you know, I've got a witch. I've got, you know, another Grey Warden here. You know, maybe this isn't a fight that you want. And the guy basically pisses himself going, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, we really kind of don't want this fight. And then I extorted that guy for money. He gave me 20 silvers, right? So he paid me, you know, whereas he tried to extort money in the first place. And after he paid me the money, I just got tired and killed him. <laughs> I did. I just said, oh, thanks for the money. And there's an option to kill him. And then we kill them all. Now, the reason why I did that, I, I don't normally play that dark of a character. But I just, it was refreshing to be allowed to be evil. A game that gives you choice. And in this game, I like the fact that they have an option for people that mock religion, that are critical of religion, and people like me who are people of faith. Everywhere you look, there's an option where you can sort of scoff at them talking about the maker, or you can lean into it. I think that's I think that's a fantastic addition. The game feels like you could really craft the character that you want. Somebody of the light of the faith or somebody that's just out for themselves. It's such an odd and rewarding experience. And it was obviously made by talented people that could craft this world and craft the dialogue. I got to tell you, I've been listening to some of the dialogue between the characters and origins. Oh my God. Like, I will just stop playing the game to listen to their dialogue because it's so good. Veilguard, every cutscene I see, every new cutscene I see, every dialogue option is worse than the last and it makes me want to vomit. There is absolutely nothing about Dragon Age the Veilguard that is in any way superior to, to Origins other than the graphics. And that could be solved with a graphical update. If you release Dragon Age Origins, a remastered or, or you know revamped version that was in every way the same as that game with just high-definition graphics, you didn't even play with anything else, just gorgeous graphics, I think that game would sell better than Dragon Age The Veil Guard. It wouldn't even be that much work. It wouldn't be that much money. And I think that in the end, it would give you much, much better dividends. And that's sort of where we're at. A game like that that used to be like, hey, you want to kill the refugees in this town? Go ahead. Hey, you want to dismiss all your party members? You want to be a ruthless asshole? Go ahead. The game gave you choice. And these people, these people rewarded you by supporting that, by making the subsequent games so much worse. The choices don't matter. 
They're not really real. It's all superficial. This game is just such a disappointment. It's such an unholy abomination created from all of these other nefarious elements where you put in a bunch of freaks and they put that as the first and foremost thing about about the game. That it tackles quote-unquote difficult issues and I just gotta say, I, I'm just so done with it. I'm so done with the terrible writing and I'm tired of having to defend myself and defend other people for something that is so completely basic. That game is good. Dragon Age Origins does not have the diversity, equity, and inclusion that these people claim are in it. It gives you choice, which is something these people detest. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today's video. I appreciate you watching. It's a little bit of a shorter one, but um, we've got other things to talk about. We've got other things to discuss. But man, I'm just so tired. I'm so done with this. It should not be that you have so many putrid, desperate for attention, narcissistic losers that defend this garbage all because they want to feel like they own the chuds. It's ridiculous. Anyway, have a great night. See you next time.